You know what really grinds my gears, Amber? What? Soy. Yep. You know why? Why? Because 98.5% of it is genetically modified, and the other part is extremely estrogenic. So we're either dealing with genetically modified garbage or stuff that's going to give males gynocosmasia, which we don't want, and it's still not too good on the female side as well. We want to keep our hormones level. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you three different alternatives to soy sauce because I know Amber and I both love our Asian food, but we haven't been able to have it since you were diagnosed with your thyroid issue. That's true, and I can't have soy. And soy is going to make me feel a little bit soft and puffy, so I figure, hey, let's go ahead and find some alternatives. Let's do it. So what's the first one we've got? So this one, this is actually coconut aminos. So this is a soy sauce that is made from coconut nectar. Yeah? Yep. Okay, I'm getting sciency. Watch out. Oh, just, this is intense. This is serious, people. Okay, what I love about this one is that it's gluten-free, but this is also one of the only uh, store-bought products that I found that is completely soy-free. Totally. Right? It's like every time you look in the store, you look, there's some kind of filler that's going to have soy in it. Right. You're going to have all, so all the Asian sauces have some kind of soy simply because it's a simple base for them to use. Right. And this one tastes a little nutty. It's not your typical soy sauce flavor, but it tastes pretty darn close. Yeah. And it's made actually from the coconut sap. So it's a little bit different than the nectar, but it's still kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. But all in all, it's a soy free alternative that you can use. And you can get this from pretty much any of your natural health food stores, right? Yeah, pretty much everywhere. Yep. Next one we want to talk about is Bragg Liquid Aminos. All right, seen these before. We know that wonderful lady, Patricia Bragg, that wears the bright, colorful colors and the crazy hat. We love her. <laughs> she lives up in Santa Barbara. We've been up to her ranch. She's an amazing, amazing person. She is. Probably know many of the Bragg products. Okay, so here's the caveat, just being fully transparent with you when it comes to the Bragg Liquid Aminos. All right, Bragg Liquid Aminos still contain soy. They still contain soy, but they do not contain GMO soy, which like I said at the beginning of this video, 98.5%. We don't want soy. Now still, this one is still a gluten-free alternative. Okay, so huge, 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 especially when we're talking about the thyroid. Absolutely. You want to explain why it's hard on the thyroid? Uh, gluten? Yeah. Sure, yeah. So gluten contains a protein strain called gliadin, which is almost identical in makeup to the protein that's found in your thyroid. Interesting. So essentially what happens with an antibody response is if you're already having a thyroid issue where your immune system is attacking your thyroid, then what's going to happen is sort of in a negative feedback or almost in a sense a positive feedback immune response, you consume a protein that looks similar to that antibody and your body's going to steamroll and sort of skyrocket the existing antibodies to attack your thyroid. Exactly, exactly. So any alternative we can get to gluten-free, we'll take. For sure. And that's one of the biggest, the, the most common questions that I get asked is, what do I do when I go, go gluten-free? What do I avoid? And my first response is soy sauce. Yep, totally. It's, and it really does make it tough. I mean, so this is one of the things, again, still super high in sodium, not going to lie, not something you want to just go chug for fun because <laughs> you will definitely wake up feeling feel pretty puffy and sodium rich. But if you're just oh. looking for the same taste of soy, but you want to avoid the gluten, it's a great alternative. Absolutely. Okay, so what's this third option that this we're looking at? Third one we're going to do gonna is going to take time. a little bit of work because we're going to make it. Okay, so let's say you don't want to go to the store. You don't want to go buy some coconut aminos, but you actually want to make something unique that you can control the sodium content. Absolutely. In. So what are we going to start here? What have we got here? I'm so gonna... what we've got set up to start is with two cups of vegetable broth. Cool. Now you can actually use bone broth if you prefer. Uh, beef bone broth is a great, great option for this specifically. It'll give you that really nice, rich Asian flavor. You'll also be able to get some benefits to help a leaky gut if you go with the bone broth. With the collagen that's in bone broth, Turn right? this guy on or what? Yeah. I don't know what burner it is, so good luck. Wrong. Wrong. Musical Tot burners. Totally wrong. That's this one. I guess, right? <laughs> okay, so we added two cups of broth, okay? You can use any kind of stock. You can use vegetable broth, which we are in this case. You can use vegetable broth if you're trying to stay vegetarian. Beef broth, chicken stock, like we said. Okay, Absolutely. and then we need one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, okay? Right. Try to find one that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. I'm just going to go ahead and add that sucker in there. So a balsamic glaze, you would probably want to stay away from more so than just a straight balsamic vinegar. And then what have we got, got next? Red wine vinegar. This is going to be one teaspoon. Oh, let's see. Teamwork. Boom. Look at that. Okay, so we've got a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. And then now, my favorite stuff, because Two it's teaspoons. just different, 
two teaspoons of molasses. I dare you to like take a sip of that. It's as thick as molasses. Okay. This stuff is sticky. We should like take a bath in it. Okay, and then the last one of the wet ingredients here is we're just gonna do a tiny, tiny bit of this sesame oil. So this is a pretty heavy flavor, so you don't really need much of it. So maybe like, what, a quarter of a teaspoon yeah, just... of this? And, just... and this is totally optional. Like, this is just gonna give it a little bit more of an Asian feel just by giving Absolutely. that sesame taste to it. So totally optional, you don't have to do it. Definitely yep. is gonna add a couple calories to it, but really no big deal. If you want no to avoid the there. seeds too, just mix that out of it. It's not totally necessary. Okay. So now we'll I'm going to stir this up a little bit and then you're going to go ahead and get... Ooh, it already smells like soy sauce. It smells awesome. It smells okay. super good. So then we're going to move into some dry ingredients here. So the first one is onion powder. Now, we need that teaspoon, don't we? We do. Let me go wash that off real quick. Okay. So we just need about a half of a teaspoon of this. And these measurements don't have to be totally exact. I kind of wing it. I like to make mine a little bit more oniony. Nice thing about adding some onion powder to it is a nice strong prebiotic so you get some good bacterial growth in your stomach from the way that you really need it. So prebiotics are gonna allow that gut bacteria to flourish, allow your existing bacteria to grow. So it's a very good solution there. What are we adding here? And now we're adding about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. Perfect. So gin burn myself. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. So ginger, obviously we have a lot of positive properties of ginger, but if you've seen my videos talking about some of the benefits of ginger, one of the main ones that I like is sort of the anti-nausea effect, what it does in terms of just balancing out your gut a little bit and helping that out. So it's a lot of, a lot of benefits coming from ginger in and of itself, not to mention giving it a nice Asian taste. What's next? I was having next? trouble opening the lid for this. This is garlic powder. So we're going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder here. Another prebiotic fiber. So we've got onion and garlic powder. So you're getting a very powerful prebiotic blend going into your intestinal tract here. So, so much better than just the stuff that we're getting out of a bottle, right? We're going to do, again, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. That might have been a little bit more than a quarter of a teaspoon. And there again, you can, you can add a little bit more spice to it depending on the dish if you need it to be a little bit more pungent. And then the one thing that you can use your own discretion on is going to be the salt, all right? You can add as much as you need to. If you like it to be a little bit salty like soy sauce, then go ahead and add some more. Yep. But you can see what we're using here. I love using the, the Himalayan pink salt. It has 84 minerals in it. You always get in a fight. I usually think it's 81. She it's 84. Always... And I looked it up and it's 84. It's 84. Okay, oh Google God. it. It's 84. Google. She's right. Okay. She's always right. I'm always right. That's how, this, that's how this relationship works. So you're probably putting a total of maybe a half a teaspoon in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stir that. We're bringing that to just to a boil. And then what we're going to do is reduce that heat just below a boil, we're gonna simmer it. Waft that towards you. And we're gonna play Sniff with that. the puppy for about eight minutes while that is simmering and reducing. And once it's reduced, we'll show you the finished product. Timmy, Timmy come here. All right, we're back. It's been like eight or nine minutes. We've reduced this down to a much thicker viscosity, and I think we're pretty much ready to use our soy sauce substitute. Yep. I'm gonna let you pour it, okay. Mr. Palace hands. It's a little warm. It's a little warm. So you look at that. Even kind of looks like soy sauce. And mind you, we use vegetable broth here, so if you had to use beef broth, it would have had a completely different look. Absolutely. So you can use this over rice, you can use this over anything, you can put it in stir, stir fry, fry, whatever. Any <laughs> Owe me a Coke, except we don't want Coke. Iced tea? Iced tea, you owe me an iced tea. So there you have it guys, everything that you need to have a low estrogen, non-soy, soy sauce recipe that's gonna make your Asian dishes have a completely different feel. It's almost like a teriyaki vibe to mm -hmm. it, really. I mean really, you could crush the pineapple and throw it in there and you'd have teriyaki sauce. That wouldn't be keto friendly. So as always, keep it, <laughs> as always, keep it locked in here on our videos. And if you have any ideas for recipes or any ideas for listicles, like our top favorite foods or anything like yep. that, make sure you let us know in the comment section below. That way we can review and pick our favorites. We'd love to do it. See you guys soon. See ya.